Hi everyone, this is Mix from Six and Bob H, and today we have a detailed review on the Nike PG6 Valentine's Day. Before we get started, if you do like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then I'll also be leaving a link to the SNBPH Sneaker Hunters Facebook group in the description box. So I do hope you can join us over there because that is a place where we talk about sneakers and basketball quite a bit. And it's also where we have the SNBPH Steel Cabinet where I, as well as a lot of our other members, Take some shoes that we no longer use and put them up for bidding at way below market value. And if you haven't already yet, please do make sure to sub to the channel because it really does help us out quite a lot. And with that being said, we do have the detailed review on the Nike PG6 in the Valentine's Day colorway. The Paul George or PG signature line from Nike has definitely been one of their most popular and best selling ones and is honestly only really behind the Kyrie's and the Kobe's. I think historically the PG's have sold really well because for one, Paul George is pretty well liked by a lot of people. Second of all, the Paul George shoes have all performed really well. I mean the PG1's, the PG2's and the PG2.5's were all really solid and then the PG3, the PG4 and the PG5 were all super awesome and were all some of the best hoop shoes at the time of their release. And then the third reason why these do sell so well and are so popular is because of its inexpensive price tag. I mean historically speaking, Paul George always has had the most inexpensive signature shoe when it comes to Nike. And really the only shoe now that's even in the same ballpark in terms of the price would be the Greek Freaks aka Giannis Antetokounmpo signature shoe. Given the popularity of the Paul George signature shoe line and how historically they've all performed well on court, the PG6 definitely had a lot to live up to and I had high expectations for the shoe and I'm happy to say it met my high expectations and it definitely has some good potential of being a top 5 basketball shoe for 2022. So to see why I am so excited about the shoe, let's take a look at the tech specs. Starting off with the traction, you do have a full solid rubber outsole with an interesting pattern that's full of circles and thick lines. This traction pattern definitely looks pretty similar to what we had with the PG4 and those did grip the part pretty well so I'm definitely expecting the same from the PG6. I did try these out here on my wood floors at home and it was definitely super grippy and also had a pretty loud squeak to it. Like I always say, the squeakiness doesn't really define the traction or how well it's gonna grip. But in the case of the PG6, I just think it's one of those cases where the traction is both squeaky and grippy. The lines on the traction pattern are also pretty widely spaced, so I don't think dust will affect this traction too much. But of course, you can't really know for sure, so I'll definitely update you all in the full performance review. Then for the durability of the outsole, the rubber is a little bit on the softer side. But the good thing is the grooves of rubber are a bit thick and a bit deep. And if you do live in Asia, the PG6 does come with an XDR outsole. So given the thickness of the rubber and the inclusion of an XDR outsole, I think this will actually be pretty good for outdoor use. Then moving on to the cushion, this is definitely one of the biggest changes from the previous shoes. Because for the PG1 to the PG3, you did have a Phylon midsole with a 4 foot zoom unit. And then for the PG4 and the PG5, Nike opted to use its full length Air Strobel. I did enjoy the Air Strobel cushion on the PG4 and the 5, but I'm definitely not complaining with what they did on the PG6 because they opted to go for full length React foam. I mean, I did used to have a pair of Infinity Reacts and I really loved those for running. And overall, React is just such a lightweight, bouncy, and plush cushion that also definitely has a lot of impact protection. Of course, this isn't the first time Nike has used React on a basketball shoe, but in my opinion, this is hands down the best implementation of React. If you all remember, Nike did try putting React on basketball shoes the first time with the Hyper Dunk as well as the Superfly, and those definitely did not go well because they just caged it a lot, and it just really felt disappointing and underwhelming. Then you also did have some React as well on shoes like the LeBron 7 low and those were definitely a lot better than the hyper dunks however they only used it in the forefoot and it was also pretty caged as well so it wasn't really that full react feel that you would get from a casual shoe or a running shoe with react and i'm happy to say though that the awesomeness of nike react is really able to shine on the pt6 because they do cage it up a little bit especially here on the lateral side but here on the medial side you can see that it's just fully exposed and free to expand 
this just gives you such an awesome underfoot feeling and when I first tried these on I was just super excited because we've really never had react this good on a basketball shoe. It just feels super comfy and plush underfoot and has a nice bounce back to it but it also feels pretty stable because they did cage it up a little bit with the rubber here at the forefoot. Overall, I just think they did an awesome job with the cushion because finally, after a really, really long time, we have Nike React done right on a basketball shoe. Then moving on to the materials, the Nike PG6 does have an almost entirely textile upper that definitely doesn't feel like the most premium in the world, but it's definitely an improvement from last year's shoe. The materials on last year's shoe definitely got the job done, but in hand they were a bit plasticky and cheap feeling, so at least they did improve on it with the PG6. You do have a pretty interesting mix of textiles on the PG6, because for the main body of the shoe you have a mesh, but it does feel pretty structured and supportive, and I think it's because there is a bit of glue or a bit of plastic in there that really gives it a bit of added rigidity. Then here at the forefoot, you have a toe cap of nylon and it's pretty interesting choice, but nylon is pretty durable and it also seems like it moves well with your foot. Then here at the tongue and here at the heel, it definitely is a pretty interesting material because it almost feels like a microfiber cloth of sorts just because it's pretty thick, pretty fuzzy, and soft. Then rounding out the other materials, you do have a bit of synthetic leather on the circle overlays at the lateral and medial side, as well as these sort of lace wings on the second and third eyelids. Then you also have a nylon pull tab here at the tongue, and then you also have a soft and padded neoprene sock liner. Overall, the materials are just super comfy on foot, and I also really like that fuzzy, almost microfiber-like texture here on the tongue and back of the heel. Then moving on to fit and sizing, I did go through the size with the Nike PG6, and it fits me perfectly well. It definitely fits pretty much the same as all of your other Paul George shoes, so if you've ever had a PG shoe before, I'd go with the same size. Then for those buying the shoe who would have this as their first PG shoe, I would go through the size if you have a narrow foot or if you have a normal width foot and like a bit of a snug fit. But if you have a normal width foot and want a little bit more room or if you're a wide footer, I would recommend going up half a size. Then moving on to the aesthetic details, this is the Valentine's Day colorway of the shoe. So there are definitely a lot of minor details that are specific to the Valentine's Day theme in this particular colorway of the shoe. Starting off with the outsole, it is mostly this light pink. And then you also do have a Nike swoosh here at the middle, as well as Nike React branding here at the tip of the toe. Then here at the lateral side of the outsole, you do see this PG logo in this light blue, and it also does wrap up to the midsole. Then moving on to the midsole, here on the lateral side, you do have a lot of that rubber coming up, but you also do have cutouts for that React foam, and the cutouts are very similar to the ones we found on the Nike Element 55 and Element 87. Then moving on to the medial side, you do have a bit of caging here at the forefoot, but here at the midfoot to the heel, that white react is fully exposed. Then moving on to the upper, it is mostly this interesting greenish blue color, but you also have other colors on the upper, like the super pale green on the tongue, and this pink nylon pull tab on the tongue as well. You also do have these half circles here at the lateral and medial side of the midfoot, and they have this really interesting pattern and color, which you can also see on the lace wing. And then you also do have butterflies stitched in all around the shoe and it's definitely pretty interesting because I don't remember ever having butterflies on a basketball shoe. Then for your bits of branding, you do have a pink backwards swoosh here at the heel part of the lateral side and a smaller backwards Nike swoosh on the medial side which is in green. You also do have your PG logo here at the base of the tongue and here on the nylon pull tab, you do have a basketball with an arrow shot through it and also Paul George's signature. Then for your last aesthetic detail here on the pink insole, you actually have a small throwing of cute. Then for the overall aesthetics, when I first saw these on site, I really wasn't digging them. But just having the shoe in hand, it does look a lot better in person. But it still isn't what I would consider like a really beautiful shoe or a shoe that I would really want to wear off court. On court though, I think the shoe will look pretty unique and it really stand out. Just because you do have a pink outsole and the sort of greenish blue upper, that's a pretty unique color. Oh and of course, let's not forget, you do have stitched in butterflies all throughout the shoe. So that's definitely going to be a head turner and conversation starter. For the overall aesthetics, I just think that this colorway is really out there. But if you're the type who really wants to look unique and really stand out, this Valentine's Day colorway is definitely a good option. Then moving on to the price, the Nike PG6 retails for 6,195 pesos here in the Philippines or 120 US dollars. 
They did bump up the price a little bit from the previous shoe because those used to retail for $110. But for those extra $10, they did give us a full-length React midsole as well as better and more comfortable materials compared to last year's shoe. So if you look at it that way, I think it is pretty justified. I did get my pair over at the Nike website last February 18th and this particular colorway is the only one available right now on the Nike Philippines website. The Nike PG6 isn't available yet in the US the last time I checked but it should be releasing sometime late in Feb or maybe early March. Just definitely keep yourself posted through many of the sneaker sites if you are in the US because the release dates do get pretty confusing with all of the supply chain issues moving back a lot of release dates and even sometimes moving them forward. So there you have it guys, that was my detailed review on the Nike PG6 Valentine's Day. Once again, if you do like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you haven't already yet, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon for notifications. And as always, whether you're looking for that retail win or if you and Kawhi are both trying to get healthy in time for the playoffs, just keep on hunting.